everyone. My name is Taylor Potts and I'm an attorney with Gold Quarry Interact. What I'm here today is to launch our new social security blog series, um, Twilight Zone Social Security Style. Um, and just give give you know a little bit of information about that. So like I said, we're launching that new blog series and it'll be exploring myths, 12 of them to be exact, um, in social security and why they became so pervasive, um, if they're true, partially true, and why, why they became so pervasive on um, what information behind them we can give. So the first one we're going to look at here today is initial applications, why no one seems to win them. Looking at it, um, you see 70 to 80 percent of initial applications get denied um, and that's across the board. Um, there's very little bit by a little um, by state, by benefit type, by year even, but it sits in that 70 to 80 percent range. And what we really see there is that's not impossible. It's not great odds, and that's why this myth has, has, has arisen. The reason behind that is twofold. Um, one is the way initial claims are reviewed, and the second is how you're found disabled by Social Security. So how initial claims are reviewed. Social Security is under no, no requirement or no duty to reach out and, and get medical records on your behalf. Um, you have to give them that information. They will go get medical records, but they only deal with what they're given. So if there's missed information, you know, if, if, if facilities don't send complete records, if you tell them about Wheeling Hospital, but it was actually a doctor that just worked out at Wheeling Hospital, Wheeling Hospital might not send those records. Um, I had that experience at WVU Medicine when I was in law school and treated down there. Um, you're kind of everywhere. But what happens is Social Security doesn't get a complete record and that initial reviewer just goes off of that record. They're not going to search out another doctor they saw in one medical record to say, oh, well, uh, maybe we should see if there's records from this doctor since they've been noted. That also plays into the second one, how you're found disabled by Social Security disability. Um, there's really three ways, but we'll look at the second one, and that is the GRIDS or the Medical Vocational Guidelines. The Medical Vocational Guidelines take into account your age, your work history, your education level, um, your residual capacity to perform physical work after you your, your injuries, illnesses, and disabilities have been taken into consideration. Um, and it spits out a, a, a ruling of yes or no to disability um, given the law, um, which means if they're working with incomplete information, they can apply those, those grids appropriately. Um, so you're not only losing out on the other ways they can find you disabled, just by lack of information, but they're also unable to appropriately apply the grids, which really leads to a, a very surface level um, decision for Social Security disability benefits on initial applications in 70 to 80 percent plus of the cases. Um, and that's why you're seeing this number, and that's why it feels like it's impossible to win these claims. That's bad news for your initial application, obviously, but it's good news for your claim. What that means is just because you've been denied doesn't mean your claim is a bad claim. It may just simply mean that, hey, we need to go do some work on it. Um, and that's where Gold Quarry Interact and myself can really come in. We're here to help you um, with your Social Security disability or other benefit claims. If you're considering applying, if you've been denied, please reach out to us. Um, we're happy to give you any information we can. Um, and then, you know, if necessary, and if you want to, um, represent you to help you get the claims and benefits you deserve.